Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Well, it's been, I guess, close to a week since I put up my last video. And I've been busy here at the house. We've had quite a bit of rain. In between the rain, I've been working on the garden. We've got everything planted now with the exception of our green beans and I'm gonna plant them this afternoon when I get done here. Uh, during the rainy spells, I have spent my time in here in the shop working on that 50 cal ammo can stove that I mentioned in the last video. I decided to go that route because the other stove that I was building is just going to be too daggone heavy to move. I think right now the weight on it, it's almost 25 pounds and that's just too heavy to pack. It'd be all right if you're going to truck everything in or take everything in on a four-wheeler or whatever, but it's entirely too heavy for what I was going to do with it. So I decided to go to the ammo can stove. I have watched so many videos on ammo can stove builds. And I have kind of went the untraditional way. Most people in the videos I've watched build them with the lid up, remove the carry handle, and use the top of the lid as a cook surface. I wanted to retain the carry handle for purposes of transportation. I have found a few videos where people built them in the untraditional way of top down, bottom up, and that's the way I decided to go. I have made some changes over what I've seen on the internet, and I will explain those here in just a minute. But uh, everything I've used in this, I have had laying around here at the shop. Some of it is pieces that I had left over from the other stove build that I hadn't used yet, and I've decided to use them on this. But that's enough of that. Let's just jump right into it. I'm not gonna try to bore you to death with a lot of specs as far as size of openings and all that kind of stuff that will that's entirely up to user preference so but uh, we'll get into this uh, let me get it over here and get you all turned around all right standard 50 cal ammo stove like i said i went with the untraditional way of using the top as actually the bottom when the stove is set up because I wanted to retain the carry. One thing that I did have to do, and they all, the videos, they all do this, is when you take the rubber gasket out of the top, you will have to drill your hole, put a bolt through with a wing nut on it to hold the latch because without that rubber gasket, it does not retain enough retention for that to lock down. Get the lid off of this. Get into it. On this, all I did is I just drilled, I think it's a quarter inch hole, stuck me a bolt through it, put me a lock, nush, lock washer and a nut on it, locked it down tight, and then just use a washer and wing nut to hold it together. Get my pieces out of here. That. We'll talk about the top half of it first. Uh, I used a, decided to go with a three inch stove pipe hole instead of a four inch. Main reason for that is to give me more surface up here to put a skillet pot, whatever to cook on. Uh, I had some eighth inch steel plate laying around and that's what I used for the door, the latch and everything. And it's also what I used to make my fire grate that goes in the bottom. You'll see that here in a minute. <clears throat> what I did decide to do different with the opening. Most of these, when you look at them in this configuration with the bottom down, they've got an air slide across the bottom. I didn't like that. And the reason I didn't like that is because in order to do that air slide, you have to leave roughly about that much at the bottom to put your air slide in to leave enough room for it. Now, what that does is that in turn gives you a smaller opening at the top. 
I wanted a larger opening on the front of mine to be able to put stuff in it uh, instead of having that smaller opening. So I decided not to put my air dampener at the bottom. Uh, we'll get into that here in a minute. Just a couple of little cheap hinges, all the bolts and stuff I have here because anytime I do anything, I don't throw all my excess old bolts and parts away. I've got a metal can over there that's got bolts, washers, nuts, everything under the sun in it. And that's where all of this come from. But uh, the latch is just a typical latch. The handle is made out of a coat hanger. I took a 5 8 inch bolt and the coat hanger straightened it out and then just coiled it and made it myself. So it works good. Um, <clears throat> let me get the legs and the bottom set up. We'll put this thing together. I'll get you some measurements on that. And then we'll talk about my air damp. One thing you will have to do with your lid if you decide to go this way, this has another piece in here that's spot welded in five places on each side. That will have to come out. What I did with it is I just took a pair of channel locks and bent it and then would bend it over and pop each weld that way and took it out that way. My legs are just standard 5 16 bolts. They've got a nut on the bottom here and then a wing nut on the top. Let me get that wing nut off and I will give you a measurement on my them. Oh, they are 4 inches long. So that's what I used for my legs. Get them stuck on here real quick. One thing I would suggest, and I made this mistake, it works out, but you have to be a little more conscious of what you're doing, and I'll show you that here in just a second. Knowing that things are more stable, the closer to the corners you get your legs and all of that, I try to get my legs as far out as I can. Now, that being said, you have to watch the wing nuts because if you get a wing nut too far over, it'll close this gap up and it won't let the lid close. If I had it to do over with, I'd have moved everything in probably a quarter of inch to a half inch more. So that's for all of you that uh, are going to make one of these in the future. <clears throat> like I said, I used that same eighth inch steel cheap plate that I had. What I did on these, I just drilled a hole at each end, uh, took a little die grinder and cut a slot, and then cut them out with a sawzall. <laughs> that explains why they're crooked as crap. His sawzall blade wanted to walk. The way I got that set up, it is just big enough to hit all four of the bolts sticking through for my legs. It holds it up and gives me an air gap underneath. And also it's a place for ash and stuff to fall. Now to give you an idea on the size on this, <clears throat> it is about a quarter inch smaller all the way around than the actual ammo can. Now, let me get the lid on this and get it set up and get everything in it and we'll go from there. Height on this is ten and a half inches. I don't know if you can see that very well or not, but it's ten and a half inches. 
from the ground up to the bottom of it is roughly three and a quarter inches. Now, if you wanted to, you could adjust those and give you a little more space if you needed it. <clears throat> but with the bigger, you can get in there easier, put stuff in it easier. Uh, I like that a whole lot better than having the smaller door and having the air damper here in the front. Now, when it comes to the air damper, I'm faced with two choices, and I'm not sure which one I'm doing. I'm leaning more toward the second than I am the first one. The first one, I can put some sort of air dampener on the door, one in the bottom that slides, spins, something like that. I don't really want to do that. I want to keep the front of it as solid as possible. What I'm leaning more toward the lines of doing is coming here on the side and putting me about three holes on each side and then make me a slide adjuster for that on each side. That's probably what I'm gonna end up doing, but I'll see, I haven't made up my mind one way or the other. I've gotta put my baffle in it. The main reason I'm putting my baffle in, it's gonna go in, it's gonna come up probably to about right there and come down to about there. Give me about a one inch gap at the top. The reason I'm doing that is they say it makes them more efficient and burn more complete. But the other reason is without that baffle, when you get this stove rocking, the flame will actually shoot up the chimney for a ways. And I don't want it to get so hot that it melts my hot tent when I get it. So... That's the main reason for the baffle is to kind of keep the flames from actually coming up the chimney. <clears throat> but if things work out right, I will have all of that done here within the next four or five days. Um, probably over the weekend, hopefully, maybe Saturday or Sunday, I'll be able to get out in the backyard and do a full burn on it and burn all the rust and paint and stuff off of it and get it ready to paint. Then we'll be able to figure out more from there. But as of right now, that's where I'm at with it. Uh, hope you found this interesting. If you have any questions, any suggestions on that air dampener or uh, any comments, let me know. Like, share, and subscribe, and I'll get another one out for you here soon. Y'all have a good day.